In this smartphone show, I look at the Sony Ericsson W950i, a very stylish, music-focused smartphone. I also look across at Macworld briefly at the iPhone and the implications of its launch. And finally, we look at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas 2007 with news of new Nokia smartphone releases. Unless you've been living on Mars for the last couple of weeks, you'll already have heard and seen coverage of Apple's new iPhone project. It's certainly newsworthy for its style and usability claims, but there are a few points worth making absolutely clear before you start lusting after one. First and foremost, the iPhone isn't technically a smartphone, as it's not open to new applications. You just get the apps that Apple create for it and ship in the ROM. There's not even a way of running Java applets. Secondly, despite Job's claim that it was five years ahead of the competition, the iPhone has a fairly lowly specification with no 3G support and only a 2 megapixel stills camera. And finally, the timescales and costs mean that you'd have to wait around a year to get your hands on one in the flesh in Europe, when the unsubsidised cost likely to be around £500 to £600 in the UK. As you'll know if you've been watching the smartphone show for very long, just about every existing device I feature has the same capabilities as the iPhone and at a lower price. Although I don't want to sound as if I'm anti-Apple, I applaud the iPhone. I applaud their presentation of it and I applaud their goal of making smartphones much, much easier to use. With the announcement of the iPhone, 2007 suddenly got a whole lot more interesting. Back in Las Vegas at the truly huge Consumer Electronics Show 2007, Rafe Blanford from All About Symbian was there taking some video for me and the highlights of the show were the launch of the Nokia N76 and the N93i, both based on Symbian OS and both due to be available very soon across the world. The N76 is a new form factor for Nokia, the razor-thin clamshell. They've even styled the case in the same way as the razor, with a metallic and super shiny keypad. Aside from cosmetic similarities though, the N76 is way more advanced than the Razer, with full N-Series and S60 third edition functions, including a decent 2 megapixel camera, and interestingly there's an external display that can also be used as a landscape viewfinder, with buttons beneath to act as music controls when the clamshell is closed. Very neat. The Nokia N93i is essentially an evolution of the earlier N93 that I used to film the smartphone show on. The main display has been significantly slimmed down and the small external one replaced using OLED technology. There are numerous structural tweaks that help it look a lot more stylish than its predecessor and I'll have a full video review of the N93i in Smartphone Show 23. It's true that Sony Ericsson have always championed the cause of stereo music on smartphones, with their innovative UIQ2 based P800 playing back my favourite music as early as 2003, while Nokia's smartphones were still crippled with tinny mono sound. The P900 and P910 followed in 2004 and 2005 and helped keep the design alive, but the launch of the Nokia 6630 in 2004 and a deluge of stereo compatible models thereafter and with the rise and rise of Windows Mobile, uh, devices all of which are fully stereo ready, Sony Ericsson are today facing vastly more competition than in the days of the P800. Luckily their answer is definitely up to the job, at least in terms of its music focus. You'll remember that in smartphone show number 9 I reviewed Nokia's S60 3rd edition attempt at a music focused Symbian powered smartphone, the N91, but in all honesty I was underwhelmed by its tiny screen, its mechanical hard disk, its fiddly keypad and clunky and heavy steel styling. Admittedly with the benefit of another 6 months of development time, Sony Ericsson has now shown how to do music properly with this, the Walkman W950i. Styled very much in the iconic iPod vein and with no obviously protruding buttons or fins, the W950i looks and feels a quality piece of kit. As with the original N91, there's 4 gigabytes of storage for your music and media, but this time it's pure flash memory. There are no moving bits and there's a subsequent increase in battery life, speed of access and reliability. There's absolutely no mistaking the Walkman branding and the music focus from the, the hardwired Walkman player microswitch on the front cover to the icon just below the screen to the etched logo on the left hand side just under the UIQ3 scroll wheel and the back button to the default system wallpaper and to the first day screen icon. 
Once the Walkman player application is launched, three extra light up hardware icons appear just above the keypad for quick back, play, pause and forward control. And when not in Walkman player or when deep in a dialogue or menu, the icons are locked out and their built-in lights dim appropriately. Pretty cool. Rather curiously, there's an extra play pause button just beside the volume up down jog control. And in case you're wondering, while playing music, the left hand scroll wheel is used for moving between items in your playlist. The play controls also work well in the built-in FM radio, helpfully. I was impressed by the radio, which showed up more stations than any of my Nokia smartphones, and it also helpfully identified them without me having to guess. Reports around the net have spoken of the apparently outstanding audio quality of the W950. It's certainly high, but I'd venture to suggest it's not significantly higher than the output of many other Symbian OS uh, or Windows Mobile based hardware. The thing is that the limiting factor for music quality isn't usually the hardware anymore. It's all the other things like the, the headphones used and their quality of reproduction and a fit, the encoding format and the bit rate used when producing the mu music files. Certainly I was very impressed by the comfortable in-ear stereo headset supplied with the W950. It's got good bass response and enough perceived volume to be used in almost any environment. Things start to deteriorate slightly away from the music side of things. UIQ3 is the stylus-based interface now owned by Sony Ericsson and I have to confess that the whole concept of a touchscreen on a phone seems a little over the top. Not least because of the danger of scratching the screen and damage and the fact that you can't then see the screen in bright sunlight because of the touch sensitive layer. The W950's sister device, the P990, suffered from an over complex interface because of its keyboard and flip and the W950 is certainly more focused than that. But there are still quite a few ways of doing the same thing using combinations of stylus or finger selection, hardware buttons, scroll wheel, light up icons and on screen soft keys. Having said that, the sheer elegance of the form factor did start to win me over. Or at least it did until I started hitting problems. The W950, as with the other UIQ3 based devices, hasn't got quite enough RAM to fulfil all its functions. The casual user playing back music, checking his or her calendar and sending a few text messages will have no problems. But fire up the web browser from the today screen icon and start browsing for real, or run a Java game and you'll quickly find other applications start to choke. I lost count of the number of times I had to wait, 20 or so seconds while the operating system sorted out the contents of RAM, and I ended up restarting the device in the end and just avoiding web and Java games thereafter. Another annoyance is the placement of the keypad micro switches almost directly underneath the numbers, with the letters off to one side. Great for dialing, but not so good for entering text, as the letter groupings are too far away from the micro switches to register correctly. Luckily, text input using Jot worked well, although you're then restricted, of course, to two hand use rather than one. Web aside, the multitasking worked well on the W950 and I enjoyed using the PIM applications. The bundled software is a little on the light side, but it's easy enough to add third party programs. The absence of Wi-Fi and camera is notable here, but it misses the point. This is the most powerful Walkman device ever made and arguably the easiest to use music playing smartphone that it falls down when trying to be a full smartphone or a mobile computer, it maybe isn't as relevant as geeks like myself would care to think. The Sony Ericsson W950i